This is Jonas from vsgl.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a module in vsgl and how to instantiate it in a test bench using the port map statement. In all the previous tutorials in this series, we have been working with single file designs only. In the last tutorial, we implemented a multiplexer in this process right here. And in a different process within the same file, we created some code for providing input data to the multiplexer. The sole purpose of this process is to test the multiplexer. It also contains weight statements, which cannot be used in production modules. So clearly, if we want to have this multiplexer realized in physical hardware, we will have to do something to separate it from the test bench code. To get started, I'm going to copy all of this code and paste it into two new files. The first one, I'll give the name T15 for tutorial number 15, underscore portmaptv.vhd. The reason we are naming this file TB is because this is going to be the test bench for the multiplexer module which we are about to create. Of course, the file can have any name, but I like naming my test bench files something ending with TB. The modules and test benches often come in pairs. If a module is named my module, naming the test bench my module TB makes sense. Remember to change the entity and architecture names to T15 underscore portmap TB as well. Okay, let's just leave this test bench for now and head over to the other new file. This is gonna be our multiplexer module, so I will name it t15 underscore mux.vhd. We also have to change the entity and architecture names to t15 underscore mux. The first thing we have to do to convert this file into a module is to get rid of the test bench process containing the stimuli. I will just go ahead and erase it. In the previous tutorial, we actually created two multiplexers, one using the if-then-else statements and an equivalent one using the case statement. The most common way to create a multiplexer is by using the case statement. So we're gonna erase the other process with the if then elses. Now we are left with one process containing the multiplexer logic and we've also got a bunch of signals which we have to take care of. If we're ever gonna make this code into a module, we somehow have to make these signals accessible outside of this file. That's what the entity is for. All the VHDL files we have created until now have been with empty entities. That's because if we want to run a design in a simulator, it's easiest if the top module has no inputs or outputs. You know, if you're running a module in a simulator, what are you going to connect the outputs and inputs to? The way you do this is to have a top level module with no inputs or outputs, the test bench, and then instantiate the module you want to test into the test bench. That's what we're about to do right now. To declare the input and output signals we need, I'm typing port, open parenthesis, then I'll add a new line before we start declaring signals. By the way, VHDL doesn't care about new lines. You can write everything on a single line if you like to. It's the semicolon that separates the statements. Okay, first we're gonna declare all the input signals to this module. We do that by first writing the name, which is sig1. Then, after a colon, we specify the data direction of the signal. This is an input, so I'll type the keyword in. And finally, we specify the type, which is an 8-bit unsigned before we end this line with a semicolon. We have now replaced this signal with an input to this module. We haven't copied the initial value though, we will have to deal with that in the test bench. The other three inputs to this mux are exactly the same, so I'll just declare them real quick. Next up is the selector signal. This is also an input, so I'll declare it using the in keyword. And of course it's a 2-bit unsigned, just like before. Now we've got two output signals left, but I should have deleted one of them. The code below is using the output2 signal, so I'll keep that one and I'll delete the output1 signal. Then I'll change the name from output2 to just output, and also I'll change the name where it's used down in our process here. Back to the entity, we're going to declare the output signal just as we did with the inputs, but this time we're going to use the data direction out instead of in. That was the last signal, so we're not gonna end the line with a semicolon, which is a little weird, but that's how it is. Instead, we're going to close off the port parenthesis. We do that right after the last signal by typing end parenthesis, semicolon. Then we have to erase the output signal declaration which we just replicated from the architecture. One last thing before we leave this module, the architecture name is sim. Technically, you can give the architecture any name you like, but the word sim implies that this is a test bench, but we've just converted it into a module. So what should we name it? A common architecture name is RTL. I always name the architecture in my production modules RTL. That's short for Register Transfer Level. It says something about the abstraction level of the code inside of the module. It's not on the transistor level, and it's not on the behavioral level. It's on the Register Transfer Level, which is the abstraction level you're gonna be working on if you're working with FPGAs. Our multiplexer module is complete, so let's head over to the test bench and see what we can do. 
Obviously, we're going to have to delete the multiplexer processes because we've just implemented a multiplexer in a module. In the previous tutorial, we had two output signals because we had two different multiplexers. Now we have just one, so I'll delete output 1 and rename output 2 to just output. I'm just going to change the comment on our process down here from stimuli for the selector signal to test bench process because that's describing better what it's doing right now. Then it's time to instantiate our multiplexer module in the test bench. The word instantiate just means to create an instance of, and that's what we're going to do right now. Right above the test bench process here, we're going to create an instance of the multiplexer module. We're going to start by giving a name to the instance. We're naming it i underscore mux. You will find the name in the module hierarchy in the simulator as well. After the colon, we write the keyword entity, followed by the name of the library where the module is located, which is work. We didn't give our library a name, and the default library name in VHDL is work. Then, after a dot, we specify the module name, which is t15 underscore mux. Now you should specify the architecture that you want to use. We do that by writing RTL inside of parentheses. After that, we type port map open parentheses. Then, on the next line, we're going to map any one of our local signals to the module's entity port. I'll start with the selector signal. First, we write the name of the module's input, which is cell. Then, after this equals greater than notation, I'll write the name of the local signal, which also has the name cell. This is the selector signal from our module entity, which is now connected to the cell signal in our test bench. Then, I'll just connect all the other signals in the same way, separating the different lines using comma. Finally, we have to close off the port map parentheses. We do that after the last signal by typing end parentheses semicolon. You may have noticed in any of my other videos that I like to arrange the signals in columns like this. This is just because I think it looks better. Different designers have slightly different coding styles and this is my style. Alright, we have now created a multiplexer module and we've instantiated it in a test bench file. I'd say we're ready to try it out in a simulator. I'll add both the file containing the multiplexer module and the file containing the test bench to our model sim project. Then I'll select both of them and press compile. But there's a problem. The compiler is complaining about unknown expanded name. This is just because we didn't set the compile order in the simulator and just by chance the test bench was compiled before the multiplexer module. Then the compiler couldn't find the compiled multiplexer to insert into the test bench because it hadn't been compiled yet. But now the multiplexer is compiled, so I'll just press compile again, and this time it will be able to compile the test bench module as well. Now we are ready to start the simulation. Our module is as usual in the work library. That's why we specify that we wanted the multiplexer module from the work library in the VGL code as well, remember? And now we're not gonna select the T15 underscore mux module, but we're gonna select the T15 underscore port map TB module, which is the test bench. Okay, now I'm adding the signals to the waveform and pressing run. Of course, the signals behave exactly the same way as they did in the previous tutorial. No big surprise there. The test bench process increments the selector signal, which is an input to the multiplexer module. And the multiplexer reacts to this by changing the output signal to follow the correct input signal based on the value of the selector. You should now have learned how to create the module and instantiate it in another VHDL file using the port map statement. Unfortunately, there are quite a few different ways to do this, and this is one of them. But all the methods have in common that the modules, inputs and outputs are mapped to some local signals in the VHL file where it's instantiated. So the different methods are really not that different at all. Creating modules is the way to go when designing VHL. Not only does it allow for code reuse, but it encapsulates complexity. You will soon learn the advantage of the divide and conquer strategy. Nothing is more complicated to understand than a mile long VHDL file with signals going everywhere. That's all I have for you in this tutorial on module instantiation using port map in VHDL. If you enjoyed it, you might want to head over to vhdlwiz.com for more tutorials and blog posts.